Oh, this is good. Okay. This is good, no? Yeah. I'll have more of this. It's sprinkled in the calamansi. I'm not sure. 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 I'm Yum yum. You like it? Yeah, but the main was the. Not that great, is it? Good, good. How are you? Working, working, and working. Oh, yeah. But after dinner, we'll have. Do you know? Hello. Hey, hey, man. How, are you how are you doing? Good, good. good. Yeah. See, Congrats. if you cannot come to Bangkok, you can come. I have to come to Philippines. Yeah. So, cheers for you. Snake, sir. Any allergy or any intolerance? So, we cook everything fresh. Uh, we'll take our time. You'll experience something that most of the things you will be eating in the beginning with hands. I'm not served any spoon on fork because I believe uh, we are losing a religion in Asia because our religion, my religion, is cooking and eating. And uh, all we all we do is we we go too too Frenchified. Everything we need is spoon and fork and things like this, which actually actually we lose the the whole texture of the food. We don't feel the food. We don't feel the temperature of the food. And that's why what I've done is uh, in our restaurant back home in Bangkok. We make menu 70% and go 90% eating my hands. Okay, and uh, I have not adjusted any spices to your taste. I've done what I do in Dagan, and um, the dishes here are very simple. They are first few inspirations from the street. Some of the things I stole from Chelly's kitchen, and uh, which he would not not know today, but after five days he'll say, "Where the hell is that?" <laughs> so, cocoon looking thing. Okay, Chef Chelly's uh, cherry bomb. Which is uh, I call chili bomb and it's got spiced uh, cream in it. So you eat it. It's like you get the flavors of India. That was a rice puff, which yeah, has been rice taken. Puff. Rice puff, which is with the pani puri, the spiced water moves inside. Yeah. Again, that was street food. Yeah, that was a combination from uh, chili. Chili, chef chili has done the rice puff, and then the pani puri moves has been done by Chef Gagan. So it has been combined together, cross culture. It would be the yoga, but just be careful lifting the spoons. Just, just pick up like. Carefully, sometimes it slips out. Yes. Okay. So yeah. entire thing into the mouth. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, looks good. Yeah. Okay, I am super clumsy, so you know what? <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah. no one's guessing. I should serve you for mm. it. just explodes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you try? It's very nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So. And then the edible plastic bag, please don't tear the bag, we'll charge you two times if you tear the bag. So, <laughs> so just have to eat the bag. You all this. And this is the spice nut bag, you're supposed to have it like that, in one go, without opening the bag. Okay. So, your next course is, uh, I had fun in your restaurant, in, in your country actually, not in the restaurant. But in the restaurant they had some uh, adobo powder made, mm -hmm. so they made adobo powder and when it tasted it said it's amazing. So. Uh, we were actually creating a lot of dishes and that's what cross culture is about where I come get inspired. Identity of some dishes were in a way that we come, we adapt, we use only the local produce. Nothing we bought except some spices. Like five spices you can count. You can smell them actually. That means I cook. Actually I rubbed it and showed I'm cooking. <laughs> so, uh, so all these things were from here, so that's why we saw the adobo powder. So what we did, we have a, a dish in our restaurant called Bengali mustard in some cookie, false cookie. But what we did was, we put some seaweed, which is very ingenuous to here, you know, it's seaweed powder and adobo in that cookie. So it's, I'm combining adobo, which is vinegar and garlic with Bengali mustard, which tastes like wasabi and with cookie. A, a cookie which is not baked, but with seaweed. So you know, this is what is all cross culture about, where we inspire. That's why I said that the menu was printed at 5.30, 6 o'clock. Because we were still changing, we were still changing. It's all about experimental. As I said, these are not any referential dishes. These are all fantasies of our restaurant. So. 
papadam in a tapioca. And then this is a adobe. Both were eaten with the serving and powder. So we say Indian, but it's not very strong masala. But it's like a sabi when you have, but it's not easy to get the sabi at all. And then this one is supposed to look like a bird nest. Got none. The papa dog. Agan in Manila. So what's inside here? So these are the sponsors. It's for the premiere. A gift from Breville, Scavolini store. Let's see. What's Scavolini? What's its purpose? Of course, San Pellegrino. Yes, fine dining lovers at home. Even we get foodies from from Philippines, not from Japan. That's a new thing in Japan. And I, of course, you have a lot of good tuna. So. Uh, what we created was, I called it ceviche for you to be more familiar, mm -hmm. but actually it's a very simple Indian dish. If you take out the fish, it's Indian. If you put the fish, it's ceviche. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's, very, it's like an Indian salad, like very similar to Thai papaya salad. Or it's a tangy, yummy, spicy salad that you'll have. There are two versions, one is with the tuna and one which is in like the urchin, like the urchin bowl itself. And the urchin is basically more Japanese because I go to Japan every three months, two months. And I'm cooking there now, there's a lot. And uh, this one is my, my fantasy about Japan. So I use the local uni mm -hmm. and I use uh, melons and I marinated them with yuzu. I bought some yuzu with me. Japanese uh, lemons and uh, that's why one my thing is the first one as I said the devil and the angel the black and the white have the devil first the spicy and the white one will cool you up station from uh, wood and uh, mostly things that we see in the forest that grow and the most expensive things that actually grow in the forest are wild truffles morels yeah so we made this Inspiration, the log that you see is made of mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, that's not not this log, but the log, the small one. <laughs> okay, and then morels from Kashmir. Okay, we got morels from Kashmir, and then a little bit of spicy, and the whole thing is the whole dish is inspired of forest. And how mushrooms grow on logs and things like this, and it's everything. And Except the morals and the truffles that we bought, everything else is from here. The local mushrooms, the local things, the local spices, the local leaves. And uh, enjoy the course. Next dish is a, a charcoal. It has the philosophy of what we did yesterday and she will tell you what exactly it is. But uh, the whole uh, dish is a very Filipino dish. Okay, but my version. Enjoy. If I try to guess this dish, I need the manya. I don't know. What is this? Fish. Is it Any bangos? guesses? Bangos. Milk fish? No. no. Lapu lapu? No. <laughs> it's a fish. Maya Maya. Maya Maya. Oh, Maya, Maya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should have just carried on a bit though. <laughs> so it is with the bamboo charcoal outside with Indian spices and the charcoal powder as well is made out of Indian herbs. And it's a fermented batter, completely. Like not tempura, but yeah, Indian tempura batter, you can say. Yeah. Fermented, what is fermented? I can't, like it's in India, we make a dessert out of it, but here he did not add the sugar bit, and it was in a savory form. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you guess what was in the charcoal? Maya. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I did not tell them. Maya, Maya, and what else was inside? Oh, did not tell us. <laughs> it's what, a very Filipino dish. Uh, no? You yeah, know something? Not from Japan, but from Philippines. It's, yeah, it's amazing. You see the result. And we cooked it for 16 hours, and we pressed it, we pickled it. And then what we do is a vindaloo. Vindaloo is a Portuguese influence to, to India in Goa. And it's basically pickled pork. So what I did was I just did the same version. And the funny thing is, it's very similar to your recipes here because they put lots of vinegar. But Indians don't know how to eat without spices. So we add a lot of spices to it. 
And ba, boy, actually I made the word more longer because ba in Thai means stupid, mad, crazy. And boy means boy. So you have to have the heart of man to eat the spicy dish. And you'd be crazy enough to be cooking this with the suckling pig. <laughs> Pig is so good here. That he wishes he could just if he could import this instead of importing from Japan. Like we have really good pig now. I'm not surprised. He works for Katsuya. That's a lobster yeah. and uh, uh, pineapple chutney and beetroot with some lime leaf. And it's a very South Indian curry. But uh, as I said, I was actually there was an article written about me that the chef has only one curry in 23 courses. So I said I cannot do more than two here. <laughs> So this is how I, I do curries. I take inspiration from curry and create my own fantasies. Yeah, yeah. So enjoy. This is uh, my interpretation of uh, the first dish that uh, Shell took me to eat. Uh, the the pancit palabok. <laughs> Because that is your staple food, right? Yeah. It's your rice noodle with uh, the crab and the crab and the crab. So what I thought was I will give you back with my staple food for the same day. So that you feel the similar attitude. And this is basically a crab curry with the red the oil is basically the, the crab eggs and the coconut emulsion wow. with the lime and Indian rice. Wow. So this is how you end an Indian restaurant with the Indian curry, correct? Yeah, and, and you have not eaten this in our restaurant because this is I said, we, we created the dishes with the local ingredients. The crab was so good. So yeah. that's, that's how it is. This is uh, one of the desserts that we had to collaborate together. Uh, so it's uh, one of the desserts with some of uh, Gagan twist. It has been very different to work with him in the kitchen. He's me is super organized mathematic. He's very, you know, like uh, spontaneous. But, you know, today we have, you know, a technique that he didn't plan, it was a mistake. We fermented a coconut and we put a leg, a leg. And it was that something that you eat in your curry today. So, you know, a lot of things happen in these days in the kitchen. We really learn from each other and it happened a great experience. And this is one of the dishes. Some of the dishes that you eat tonight also is part of, you know, gallery bus, you know, kitchen there. So here we have a, a, a Nuts, praline, pili nuts, uh, dalandan mousse, dalandan uh, merengue, and then they put a uh, uh, ice cream. Uh, that's it. Okay, very light, light clean, uh, light to clean the palate. Okay. Cross culture one, huh? Completely cross culture. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is it? The last one are the Filipino mangoes. Which have been marinated with yeast. You know, like Indian sweets have silver on it. <laughs> and the ice cream is made of sake kosu, which when you saw in I was in Japan, I got the sake kosu in a freezer and I bought it in the freezer here. It's good. I have a question. How did you come up with all these dishes? Two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay.